Have you ever wondered about the oldest form of advanced surgery? What if I told you that a 2,000-year-old Peruvian warrior's skull was fused with a metal plate in one of the world's earliest examples of advanced surgery? Join me as we explore the fascinating story behind this ancient relic and uncover the secrets of our ancestors' remarkable medical techniques. A team of American doctors and anthropologists has challenged the widely held belief in the technological superiority of European civilization over the cultures of Native Americans. The researchers concluded that the level of surgical expertise among the Incas was significantly higher than in Europe in the early 20th century. Led by David Kushner, a professor of medicine and rehabilitation at the University of Miami, the scientists examined skulls with traces of trepanation found in Peru. Holes in the skull were drilled to treat various ailments, including head injuries, epilepsy, and headaches related to increased intracranial pressure. Sometimes, these procedures were carried out for ritual purposes, such as exercising demons. It turned out that trepanation was a fairly common operation among Peruvian Indians. In total, 800 skulls with holes made by ancient surgeons were found in modern-day Peru. This is more than the number of such skulls found in all other regions of the world combined. Even Tibet, where local monks drilled a third eye for ritual purposes to gain clairvoyance, was far behind. The Peruvian Indians practiced trepanation for 2,000 years. The first findings date back to approximately 400 BC, and the last belong to the 15th century. In a few decades, the Inca Empire will fall under the blows of the conquistators led by Francisco Pizarro, and there will be no one left to perform surgeries. Kushner and his colleagues examined a total of 640 skulls, which they found in museums and private collections. They divided their findings into three periods, from 400 to 200 BC, 59 skulls, from AD 1000 to 1400, 421 skulls, and from the beginning of the 1400s to the middle of the 1500s, 160 skulls. Determining whether trepanation was successful or not is relatively easy. If there are signs of healing on the bones, it can be concluded that the patient survived. The percentage of successful trepanations in the first group was 40%. In the second cohort, more than half of the patients, 53%, survived, and in the 14th-15th centuries, ancient doctors were able to increase the chances of recovery to the level of 75-83%. to 83%. By studying the findings, researchers have found that Inca surgical technologies became increasingly sophisticated and gentle over time. By drilling holes, the Peruvians learned not to damage the hard brain membrane, a thin membrane that protects our gray matter. The holes themselves were made smaller and more carefully. And then a real revolution took place. Inca surgeons moved from drilling one large hole to the technology of circular grooves. In general, this method is described in Mikhail Bulgakov's story, Heart of a Dog, when Professor Priyo Prasensky performed trepanation on Sherik. It is remarkable that the survival rate of patients of ancient Peruvian surgeons is twice as high as that of surgeons during the American Civil War, 1861 to 1865. Professor Kushner exclaimed, The mortality rate among the Incas was 17 to 25 percent, while among well-educated and well-equipped American surgeons, between 46 and 56 percent of patients died after cranial operations. The reason for the high mortality was the lack of knowledge of asepsis and antiseptics. Surgeons often examined the wound with their own fingers and introduced infection. It turns out that the ancient Peruvians were better informed about these issues. They understood how to prevent infection and deal with its consequences. We do not know what they used as anesthesia, but the large number of trepanations suggests that they discovered it long before us. Perhaps they used a pain reliever based on coca leaves, we also have evidence that the Incas had a good understanding of the anatomy of the head and skillfully avoided areas of the brain that were dangerous due to profuse bleeding. Kushner and his colleagues have come to the conclusion that Incan surgeons were several centuries ahead of Europeans in terms of skill level. For comparison, let's take a look at some medical statistics. For instance, during the Crimean War, 1853 to 1856, the godfather of military field surgery, Nikolai Pirogov performed 20 trepanations, only six of which were successful, with a mortality rate of 
During World War I, despite the use of antiseptics, the survival rate of soldiers with gunshot head injuries was still very low. In the British Army, initially, the mortality rate was 54%. Only after the introduction of X-rays for detecting and removing metal and bone fragments did the mortality rate decrease to 28%. Recently, a skull with a metal plate was discovered, and the operation was performed more than 2,000 years ago. This is one of the earliest pieces of evidence of such medical procedures. One of the world's oldest examples of advanced surgery has been discovered in the form of a 2,000-year-old Peruvian warrior's skull fused with a metal plate. According to the Oklahoma Museum of Osteology, the skull belonged to a man who sustained injuries during a battle and underwent one of the earliest known forms of surgery. Experts confirmed that the man survived the surgery, indicating that ancient peoples were capable of advanced medical procedures. While the skull is also an example of a Peruvian elongated skull, which is often attributed to genetic causes, scientists argue that this particular skull represents a form of ancient body modification, where tribal members intentionally deformed the skulls of young children by tying them with cloth or even using wooden boards to flatten the skull over time. The museum describes the artifact as one of the most interesting and ancient pieces in our collection, with a statement that the implantation of the metal plate was performed after the warrior returned from battle and is estimated to have occurred about 2,000 years ago. Despite the lack of detailed information of the exhibit, it is known that the surgery was successful as indicated by the broken bone around the implant that shows evidence of healing. The skull was previously in the museum's private collection and was put on public display in 2020 due to growing public interest in the artifact following news coverage of its discovery. The discovery provides evidence that ancient peoples had advanced knowledge of medicine and surgical techniques, challenging the idea that they were merely wild and uneducated ancestors deprived of all the charms of scientific progress. In Peru, where the skull was discovered, surgeons have long been known to have invented sophisticated procedures to treat skull fractures, a common injury at the time due to the use of projectiles such as slingshots in combat. It was also common for people in Peru to have elongated skulls, with those who possessed such skulls often being rulers or members of a power elite in society. Further archaeological excavations have revealed that Peruvian women with elongated skulls were less likely to suffer serious head injuries compared to those who did not have such skulls. Surgeons of the time performed trepanation, a surgical procedure involving drilling a hole in a living person's skull without the use of modern anesthesia or sterile methods, although it is presumed they did not have access to such methods. They recognized early on that this method of treatment could save lives. We have incontrovertible evidence that trepanation was not performed to expand consciousness or as a purely ritualistic act, but was associated with patients with severe head injuries, especially skull fractures, said physical anthropologist John Verano of Tulane University, as reported by National Geographic. It is unclear what kind of metal was used for the metal plate implanted in the 2,000-year-old Peruvian warrior's skull. Traditionally, silver and gold were used for such procedures, according to a spokesperson for the Ski Elitonans Museum of Osteology exhibit. In a 2018 study published in Current Anthropology, the practice of skull lengthening was found to be present in various cultures, from the Maya to the Huns, and was seen as a symbol of privilege and prestige in groups around the world. This suggests that the elongated skulls in Peru may have been a result of genetic causes rather than intentional body modification, as some scientists continue to argue. If you found this video intriguing and want to delve deeper into the mysteries of our universe, don't forget to subscribe to the Mystery Universe channel. Stay connected, stay curious, and let's unravel the mysteries together. Don't miss out on our upcoming videos, so hit that subscribe button and join the Mystery Universe channel today.